Hampshire. And what better place to make a fruit dessert? Two of my favorites. Pineapple upside down cake and crustless apple crumb pie. We all know that sugar is sweet, but your choice of sugar can really affect the taste of your dessert. Stick around on Baking Magic and you'll find out just how. Have you ever seen a pan like this? Look at how you can flex it. It's a flexible silicone pan. The new technology. And I'm using it today to make a timeless, beloved American cake, the pineapple upside down cake, another one of my real favorites. We begin by caramelizing the topping. The beauty of those pans is that the caramel is not going to stick to them, and every last bit is going to end up on top of the fruit. This type of pan can be used for apple upside down or any upside down cake. I'm using light brown sugar, butter, and in order to keep the sugar from caramelizing, I mean rather from crystallizing because we want it to turn amber and caramelize, I'm using a little bit of lime juice. You could use lemon juice as well or pineapple juice from the can if you're using canned pineapples. I sometimes even use fresh pineapple. Now we're going to turn on the heat and start melting together the sugar and the butter and the lime juice. Because as soon as this entire mixture is completely smooth, it's going to bubble and very hard to tell when it caramelizes, but it's a lot more delicious when you're using brown sugar or turbinado sugar. So that's why I like to use one of these heat proof spatulas because against the white you can see the color that it's getting. I also sometimes use a thermometer and when you're using a thermometer to take the temperature of a caramel that's made with a brown sugar, it's going to caramelize at a lower temperature. Regular caramel is more like 360 degrees. Brown sugar caramel will be 300 degrees. You can smell also when it starts burning. So just as soon as it starts bubbling, I stop stirring and let it bubble away and then I can leave the spatula in to see the color that it's becoming. You can see against the spatula what a beautiful amber color it is. And the deeper we go, the more delicious it's going to be. Because it doesn't get a lot darker once it goes in the oven. I'm pouring the bubbling caramel evenly over the bottom of the pan. And I've set the pan down on another cookie sheet or pizza sheet because a flexible pan will be flexible and we want it to be rigid enough to go into the oven. And now we can tilt it a little to spread it more evenly, but when it's baking, it will go under all the fruit. And now is the fun because we get to arrange the pineapple and the cherries and the, and the pecans. I like to put one slice right in the center. And if you prefer the maraschino cherries, those bright red ones, it's fine with me. My preference is the, the burgundy Bing cherries. You can leave a little room because in between the cake's going to come up and it can be covered with the pecans. But once you set it against the caramel, and be careful because the caramel is very hot, so you don't want to touch it with your fingers. Once you set it in, it gets a little bit hard to move around. And I like to use some of the halves. Either I can set them up against the sides of the pan or I can put them right on the top to fill out my decoration. Now, when you put in the cherries, keep in mind that what's the bottom is now is going to eventually be the top. So we don't want it to put it down. We want to put the closed, the beautiful side down so that that will become the top. And I put a half of a cherry in each one of these openings. And then I can start distributing the rest of the pineapple slices. I can go right in between. And when you use other ingredients, such as apples, walnuts are a great nut to use with it, pears, almonds, you can vary this and personalize it, and it's a very welcome dessert. 
Remember again that the top part of the nut is going to be what's showing. So that's what we want to place down so that we'll eventually see it there. And don't forget that when the, when the cake bakes and the batter comes up through it, it may separate a little between the slices of the pineapple. And what we can do then is add more nuts. And if they look different from the others, we'll just brush them with a little corn syrup or maple syrup if you're doing apples. So uh, we're just going to continue until we fill up all the empty spaces.